Polkadot may be the most exciting development in crypto since the launch of Ethereum, while Cardano builds itself as Generation 3 of the blockchain, improving on Ethereum's original design as Generation 2 and Bitcoin's Generation 1. Meanwhile, you have Ethereum 2.0 on the horizon that many claim will render these other cryptos obsolete, with its ability to process 100,000 transactions per second. So who's right? Well, hey everyone, and welcome to FinTech. And in this video, I'm going to be comparing these three blockchains, Polkadot, Cardano, and Ethereum 2.0, to try to determine which has the most potential to take over the world. I'll be going through and ranking the coins based on three categories, the speed and scalability of the networks, any unique features or mechanisms that one has over the other, and their future potential and progress toward their future plans. By the end of this video, you should have a clear picture of the benefits of each chain and an understanding of which parts could actually change the world and what is just hype. So hit the like button if you want, and let's start with a brief overview of each crypto, starting with Ethereum 2.0. Ethereum 2.0 is exactly what the name suggests, a new and improved version of Ethereum brought to you by the original creator of the Ethereum blockchain, Vitalik Buterin. Ethereum 2 takes all the most common criticisms of Ethereum, that it is too slow, too inefficient, and too limiting, and seeks to resolve those issues. But before we get too far into the fixes that Ethereum 2.0 adds, we need to rewind a little bit to understand what the problems are that it is solving. So let's start at the beginning like right at the beginning. So Bitcoin is sometimes referred to as generation one of the blockchain. It launched way back in 2009 when Satoshi Nakamoto minted block zero on the chain. It had certain nice features like decentralized trust, so two people who didn't trust each other could still trade Bitcoin without worrying about one or the other ripping them off. But it was also very inefficient and limited in its uses. Ethereum was the next step, otherwise known as Generation 2. Conceived in 2013 by programmer Vitalik Buterin, and finally built in 2015 by a team of developers, Ethereum was an order of magnitude more useful than Bitcoin. In addition to the Ether token you could transact with, it also had the ability to create smart contracts, paving the way for next generation blockchain tools like decentralized apps or dApps and non-fungible tokens or NFTs. And Ethereum has been the go-to choice for most blockchain developers in recent years. But Ethereum still has its own issues. It's still relatively slow, only processing 30 transactions per second. It still uses a proof of work model, meaning to mine Ether, you need to use a lot of high powered GPU farms that use up tons of electricity. And you're always restricted to the rules of the Ethereum chain, which as brilliant as its creators were, could not account for every possible future use case. So that was the situation when generation three blockchains, such as Polkadot and Cardano came out onto the scene, looking to throw out Ethereum's old way of doing things and rebuilding a new blockchain from scratch. But the Ethereum Foundation, the team that maintains Ethereum, understood these limitations themselves, and they set out to fix them using Ethereum 2.0. So the biggest and most obvious fix that Ethereum 2.0 implements is its greater speed and scalability, which happens to be our first judging category. While Ethereum can only process 20 to 30 transactions per second, and Bitcoin can only do five, Ethereum 2.0 will be able to process 100,000 transactions per second. That is pretty fast, and it even outpaces Gen 3 blockchains like Polkadot, which has a speed of 1,000 transactions per second. Though to be fair, Polkadot also allows you to connect to other chains, so if Ethereum runs faster, it can actually help Polkadot effectively run faster too. But both of those chains are dwarfed by the potential speed of Cardano, which could go as fast as 1 million transactions per second, blowing the other chains out of the water. But I said could go that fast. See, currently Cardano does not process that many transactions because quite frankly, it doesn't need to. The highest I've seen it reported to go is 250 transactions per second. But as recently as April, 2021, it was only processing around seven transactions per second. This is because Cardano is built to scale its speed as it adds users. So once the network is larger, it will naturally increase its transaction speed as well. This should effectively solve any bottleneck issues for a very long time down the road, as even Polkadot's 1,000 transactions per second is way more speed than anyone needs today. So in the category of speed, I would rank Cardano as number one, Ethereum 2.0 a close second, and then Polkadot a decent ways behind that, purely because it is not as future-proof in terms of the base chain scale as the others even though they're still plenty fast for the foreseeable future. But Polkadot might not need the same kind of scale as Cardano or Ethereum 2.0, 
because it has a somewhat unique method of running other blockchains on top of the base Polkadot chain, which leads us into our next category of unique features. In the same way that Ethereum is an order of magnitude more flexible than Bitcoin, Polkadot could be considered another order of magnitude leap forward. It is built on Substrate, which allows people to quickly build very customizable blockchains. One of Polkadot's goals is to fully decentralize the web, putting users in control of everything. They plan to do this by letting you create connections between different chains, both public and private. One way you can think about blockchain today is like the pre-internet days of networks. Before the internet, you had networks that computers could communicate over, university computers within a campus could share files, the government had a network, the military had a network. But the internet's revolution was being a network of networks. Polkadot is a similar sort of improvement on blockchain. It almost acts like the internet of blockchains, where you can build new chains on the existing chain while making use of Polkadot's built-in security. This gives Polkadot a huge advantage over Ethereum that's hard to quantify since it's just a fundamentally different way of doing things. The idea was created by Dr. Gavin Wood, one of the founders of Ethereum and the creator of Polkadot. Dr. Wood had worked as the chief technology officer at the Ethereum Foundation for several years back in the 2010s. But after a while, he started to feel that Ethereum's design was limiting. This led him to write the Polkadot white paper in 2016, a 21-page breakdown of his vision to improve the blockchain paradigm. It took another four years to achieve his vision. But while this paradigm is completely different from Ethereum, it does have some similarities with both Cardano and Ethereum 2.0 which will also have some functionality to connect to other blockchain protocols. With Ethereum 2.0, they will have a level of interoperability through their side chains, which they call sharding. To be honest, their explanation for how this works exactly was over my head, but the Polkadot Wiki has a decent explanation for anyone who might be curious. Similarly, Cardano also has a way of connecting with other chains through its proof of stake model called Ouroboros. This system looks at all Cardano's ADA tokens, and from a bunch of random numbers is able to elect a slot leader for a given period called an epic. The more tokens or stake that you have, the higher chance you have of being elected as a slot leader. The slot leader then acts similar to how a miner would in Bitcoin. They create new blocks. Once their time is done as the slot leader, they fade back into the overall pool of users and a new leader is elected. While both Ethereum 2.0 and Polkadot use a version of proof of stake, which allows them to save huge amounts of energy and have lower gas fees, Cardano's proof of stake system not only allows you to maintain consensus in a single blockchain network like Cardano, it can actually be used across a range of blockchains. So we can think of Ouroboros, the model that Cardano uses to elect slot leaders, as allowing you to scale both vertically within a blockchain and horizontally as you add more blockchains to the consensus model. But like I said, all the new blockchains use some form of proof of stake. And the reason they do it is primarily for the same purpose energy. See, in older blockchain generations like Bitcoin and Ethereum 1.0, miners have to solve complex cryptographic puzzles to produce new blocks. This was originally designed as a safety mechanism to prevent any one miner from getting too big, but it resulted in huge environmental and economic impacts. Video cards are incredibly expensive because miners bought them all up, and just Bitcoin alone uses as much energy as a small country. By switching to proof of stake for Ethereum 2.0, for example, the creators estimate it would drop their energy usage by 99.95%. Plus, by reducing energy costs, the chains could lower gas fees dramatically. Gas fees are the fees that you have to pay to make a transaction on the blockchain. With something like Cardano that uses proof of stake, it will cost you around 0.1 ADA, or a couple dozen cents. While with Ethereum 1.0's current proof Proof of work model, when I minted my own NFT for a video, I ended up spending over $50 to create an NFT on Ethereum's network. So just in terms of connecting to other chains, it kind of looks like a tie between all three cryptos. But Polkadot still has a trick up its sleeve in terms of one unique feature the other two cryptos do not have and that is a concept known as parachains. A parachain is just the name they give for a blockchain running on top of Polkadot. But the thing is, not just anyone can spin up a chain when they feel like it. Their parachain has to first be approved by the community. They do this using a bidding system. So right here, we have Kusama pulled up. Kusama is just an early release of Polkadot for proving out stuff like the bidding system. It's like a test run of Polkadot. Kusama is running auctions right now to determine which parachains should be added to their network. And you can actually use your own tokens, basically loan them out, to vote for which project you would like to see win out. 
depending on who wins, you can actually get rewarded by the winning project for participating in that auction. For example, looking at Moon River, this parachain was a winner in Kusama's most recent auction, and they gave out tokens to people who backed them. Those backers then saw huge appreciation in the value of those tokens, up around 10x at the peak. But the thing is, that isn't just a 10x return on investment, because in addition to the Moon River token the backers received, they also got back the Kusama that they loaned out for the auction. So as this becomes more popular, I don't know if the size of these rewards will change, but if you are lucky with picking winners, this could be a good way to get massive returns on investment very quickly. But why am I talking about Kusama? What happened to Polkadot? Well, like I mentioned, Kusama is basically a proving ground for Polkadot. They will continue to run auctions on this network, and then at some point in the future, Polkadot auctions will also launch. Because these auctions are not yet available, some people have started hoarding Polkadot tokens so that they have more available once the auctions actually start. This ability, for DOT holders to put money into launching new parachains gives the crypto a huge advantage from investors' perspective because it's a whole extra degree of freedom in deploying your money. So for this category, unique features, I'm going to give Polkadot the number one spot, followed by Cardano and then Ethereum 2.0, though those last two are really neck and neck. I only gave Cardano the edge due to its use of Ouroboros, which seems to give it a lot of flexibility and power in scaling out to other blockchains. But if you're more knowledgeable about crypto and you think Ethereum 2.0 has an equivalent feature, let me know in the comments. Which leaves our last category of future potential, which I think of as how ambitious are the crypto's plans and how likely are they to actually happen. In terms of plans, Ethereum 2.0 stands out as the crypto which only really has plans at this point. This blockchain has a multi-phase rollout plan, starting with phase zero that launched in December 2020. Phase zero was basically proving out proof of stake as a model. Phase one will then launch 64 side chains or shards. Phase one and a half will integrate with Ethereum 1.0, treating it as a side chain. And phase two will implement their new EWASM interface, phasing out proof of work completely and make the system fully user ready. This isn't a crazy ambitious plan in terms of new features, but the scale of Ethereum makes it very ambitious. Right now, Ethereum is the second largest blockchain in the world by market cap, sitting at $423 billion as I am filming this video. This dwarfs Cardano's ADA token at $72 billion, or Polkadot's $32.5 billion as only the 10th largest token overall. Granted, it's not as big as Bitcoin's $1 trillion market cap, but unless Satoshi Nakamoto reveals himself suddenly, no one is going to be making moves with the same scale as the Ethereum Foundation. We already talked about Polkadot's future plans, which is to finish smoke testing their auction system with Kusama and eventually roll out auctions on their main Polkadot chain. Other than that, they lay out their next phases on their website, including cross-chain messaging, balance transfers, finishing setting up their governance structure, and basically getting it running in its end state. Lastly, we have Cardano, which might actually be the farthest along in its plans. The founders of Cardano described its life cycle in five stages, foundation, decentralization, smart contracts, scaling, and governance. We're in the smart contract stage right now, and their roadmap is expected to stretch out until 2025. These phases initially kicked off in 2017, when Charles Hoskinson, another one of Ethereum's founders, left Ethereum to build his vision of a better blockchain. Cardano just launched smart contracts in September 2021. Now, what are smart contracts, you might ask? Smart contracts are what have enabled Ethereum for years to let developers create decentralized apps or dApps, as well as non-fungible tokens, or NFTs. They are core to building usable applications on a blockchain. And now Cardano also has this functionality, meaning developers can now create smart contracts on Cardano just like on Ethereum. This could be huge for attracting new users to the network, especially considering Cardano's speed and lower gas fees. At the same time, Cardano does not have nearly the developer community that Ethereum has, seeing as this feature only just launched. This is still a brand new technology for Cardano, and starting out with no developer or app ecosystem to speak of puts them well behind Ethereum in terms of their immediate utility. The next phases in their roadmap, however, are to scale out the network and put in place their final governance structure, which while substantial tasks won't necessarily change the functionality of the blockchain nearly as much as Polkadot's or Ethereum 2.0's future plans. So I'm a little split on this category. Cardano is the furthest ahead and to me seems the most likely to finish its roadmap successfully, 
while Polkadot seems to be the most ambitious with their auction system launching soon. That being said, I feel like I already gave points to Polkadot in the last category, so for future potential, I'm going to put Cardano at number one, Polkadot at number two, and Ethereum 2.0 at number three. So to recap our rankings for scale and speed, we had Cardano, then Ethereum 2.0, then Polkadot. For unique features, we had Polkadot, then Cardano, then Ethereum, and for future potential, we had Cardano, then Polkadot, then Ethereum. So if we weighted the three categories evenly, I suppose, Cardano would be the winner. Congrats to them. But honestly, the speed category really gives them the edge here, even though all three blockchains are more than fast enough for the time being. I will say that I do own a small amount of both Polkadot and Ethereum, and I do not currently own Cardano. But let me know what you think of these three cryptos, or if you have some information that you think would have swayed the results. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.